Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines and part two of this series looking at Revel's 172nd scale King Tiger. In the previous episode I applied some homemade Zimmerit using epoxy sculpt. In this film I'll be finishing off the painting, weathering and groundwork. To do so I'll be using Mission Models paints and a Galeri 98D as well as some other airbrushes. As you can see I started off by priming the model using the Mission Models grey primer and the Galeri. This was applied in thin, diffuse coats, building up the paint thickness gently and making sure that I didn't flood the detail. Then I could clean out the primer and luckily the Galeri has a mirror finish cup so that was quite easy. I could back flush and just rinse through with plenty of thinners. There was a bit of tip build up so I used a soft brush just to gently remove that from the needle. And here you can see how the model looks under a coat of primer. The Zimmerit from the previous video has come out really well and very soon I'll be moving towards the base coat, again using Mission Models and the Galeri 98D. First though, there's one more step, and that's applying a pre-shade. In this case, I wanted to make sure the lower parts of the tank were in deep, deep shadow. I took some of the Mission Models black reference and sprayed that gently at soft pressure over the lower areas of the vehicle. I could then switch to a brown mix, again from the Mission Models paint range, and softly diffuse that over the top of the black. This would ensure when I get to the base coat that there's plenty of underlying shadow and emphasis on that part of the tank. It's debatable how effective this really is when it's covered in paint, but it's a step I like to do, and here again you can see how it looks in these photos. Time now for a classic German tritonal camouflage scheme, and I start with the base, opting for the Dunkelgelb shade from the Mission Models range. Here again I'm using the same airbrush and the pressure, as you can probably tell, is very, very low. I'm just misting soft coats of this colour all over the model. The Mission Model paints, by the way, spray really well and work wonderfully with this particular airbrush. What I'm trying to do is allow a bit of the pre-shading to show through, particularly on the lower parts of the tank. Here's the overall result of all those thin coats and I'm going to be doing a colour change but first I clean the airbrush. I do this by covering over the nozzle, pressing down the air and back flushing the airbrush. Time to select the next paint which is going to be the Mission Models Rot Brown and this is going to be a bit of a workout for this airbrush doing all this fine detail. Now I had a couple of problems as you can see here, there's a bit of a splash of paint there and that's from clogging. This has had maybe three or four paint changes and it probably needs a thorough clean. Anyway I managed to get it working this time and I could do some good fine camouflage. The secret is to keep the pressure low and just build up repeated passes to give you that feathered buildup of camouflage and that creates the veiny distinctive camouflage scheme. Now you can see here that it clearly clogged up again and it splurged more paint all over the model. Again this is confirmation that it's having a hard time and clogging up and needs really to be taken apart and cleaned. I managed to unclog it and spray a bit more red all over the model. I'm not going to worry about these mistakes because I can always spray over it and tidy it up later with the base colour as you'll see. Moving on to the turret, same rules apply, just build up the camouflage bands really gently. Time for another colour change and I've moved on to their green reference, which I've put on screen. And I'm still going with the glary, but by this stage it's probably a bit too blocked up and dirty, so I need to give it a good clean. So I switched momentarily to the Sotar from Badger in order to continue a bit more of the green. Now here again, this didn't go great and it wasn't really giving me the result I wanted to, so I gave the Galeri another good clean and returned to it, and it picked up where it left off, applying nice, pleasing green bands all over the little tiger too. I'll be doing a more detailed review of this airbrush once I've got used to it and spent a bit more time, as I like to use these airbrushes a lot before doing more in-depth reviews. It's done a pretty good job up until now. Like all airbrushes, especially when you're doing this kind of finicky detail painting, it does need to be kept clean. But other than that, I'm pretty pleased with how it's performed so far. I like to tidy everything up and return to my base coat. That means overspraying the camouflage I've done and just making it more subtle. You don't want it to be too overpowering. 
Applying a mist coat over the top also helps soften all the delineations and the graduations or intensities between the red and the green. I then loaded the airbrush up with a bit more green and returned to the other side of the model and continued spraying. I wasn't following any particular pattern, I just went with my own imagination. Even though this is a specific vehicle, I just did my own paint scheme. In effect, these tanks were often painted by their crews in the field and you got all sorts of different colour schemes and variations. Okay, the model's coming together well. I'm making sure that I apply camouflage to all the lower areas like the wheels and the back of the tank as well. And that allows me just to go in and tidy up any final bits. Again, the Galeri is doing well here with this detail pickup painting where I'm just neatening everything up. And here you can see the result. You can see where the second application of green is a bit darker than where I'd misted over the base shade on the other side of the tank. Another soft coat of the base Dunkel Gelb will soon sort that out. Now detail painting, for this I use the Panzer Aces reference to pick out all the tracks and metalwork. Just using a fine brush and patience, it's easy to pick out all the lovely details that come out in this kit. Things like the tools of course need their handles painting. You can either paint them in camouflage or in this case as wood, again from Panzer Aces by Vallejo. There's really quite a lot of detail crammed into this tiny kit and plenty to paint. Onwards to the next stage, which I really enjoy, which is the weathering. And first we're going to apply washes and filters, starting off with a filter, in this case from MIG Productions. The idea of a filter is to be applied really thin. It's almost a wash, but it's a little bit thinner. And the intention is to change the chroma or warm up the colours. In this case, the reference is specifically for German tritonal camouflage. And what you'll find is a filter will just blend everything and smooth everything out. Just make the edges a little bit more diffused and a little bit neater. Next I decided to seal the model. So, so far obviously it's been painted with acrylics and clear is a acrylic floor polish. I'm not sure it's made anymore but I've got quite a few bottles of it. There's probably a modern equivalent and I did a video all about clear. This is really working like a varnish. So you apply a couple of good coats over the model and this will seal all that paint and get ready for even more weathering. Just a couple of problems though, you may find that there's some dust and dirt in the finish and Clear is really good at showing that up actually. What you can do then is go around with a fine scalpel or blade and just nip out any bits of hair or dust or detritus and then brush it away with a soft flat brush. That means you've got a tough, durable coating and hopefully very few blemishes. On to decals now, decals or transfers. These are the kit transfers and they were applied using the standard method of micro set and micro sole that I've used in multiple videos. The clear in theory gives a good base, pretty glossy and smooth onto which you can apply your transfers. After soaking them and applying a bit of micro set, it's just a case of placing them really carefully adjusting them and making sure the fit and finish goes well with the model. And if you're using references, of course, you want to make sure that you're matching the references. I spent a bit of time adjusting it and making sure that each side of the turret married up and looked the same. You can then dab it down and remove any excess with a cotton bud or Q-tip before applying Micro Sol, which is their finishing or leveling agent. Here again, dabbing it down and pressing into the Zimrit can sometimes help with something like a cotton bud. Overall, the decals went on pretty well. They seem to have a fairly decent finish. You could argue that there's a little bit of gleam on them, but applying a sealing coat of clear helps. And then later on, you'll see I apply some matte varnish as well, which helps. Now I move on to dark washes. This is a fairly classic modelling stage and the idea of a dark wash is to pick out all the details and add a shadow around them. This is an enamel based product so as it evaporates it tends to leave behind a dark residue in recesses, weld lines and other bits of detail. What that does is add depth to the model. You can apply it 
either fined by brush or you could apply it as a wet coat over the whole of the model. I tend to apply it specifically around detail, which is often called a pin wash. You can dry off the model with something like a hairdryer to speed up the evaporation process. Here you can see how the model has been unified and darkened with lots of detail showing thanks to the wash. I then approach specific areas with even more of a pin wash, so an even darker wash. Here you can see on the turret around all the details and mould lines, before moving on to the engine deck. Here again there's plenty of detail and lots to pick out with the washes. Just apply it as precisely as you can, and then you can blend afterwards with something like a wide flat brush, moistened with thinners. This is the stage we're at, so the base coat has gone on the decals and plenty of washes around detail. I then apply that matte varnish, in this case it's Vallejo's model colour varnish, applied with their airbrush thinners from the same brand. I like this as a matte varnish and it tends to dull everything down and make it look more in scale and realistic. Time now for lots of mud effects and getting our King Tiger nice and grubby. For this I reached into the Ammo by MIG range and you can see the reference on screen. This essentially was a mud reference. So there's going to be plenty of muck all over the lower parts of the tank. I then followed up with a lighter reference from the same range. This was Rain Marks FX MIG 1208. This is of course lighter and that goes over the top. The idea is later on you'll see I blend them. Again, just apply it nice and softly all over the whole of the model. There you can see the dust and mud effects on the tank. Now it's time to blend it, and again there's a wide flat brush, moistened with thinners, and I just draw it down through the two shades and create an interplay between the dark mud and the dust. That gives nice streaks and a realistic weathering effect all over the lower parts of the tank. In these shots you can see how the model looks at this stage. Time now for some stippling. You can see me turning down the airbrush. In this case I've switched to an Iwata HPCH which has a regulator or MAC valve on the body of the airbrush and that really helps with stippling. I've turned the pressure right down so the airbrush is firing specks or stipples of mud all over the model. To do this I use both the same mud references you can also use all sorts of darker mud references and oil and get plenty of splashes all over the model. It's really quite easy just to tidy it up, of course, because it's enamel with some thinners. Here's a reference I'm quite fond of. It's the MIG Productions Oil and Grease Stain Mixture. Great for replicating oil spills and droplets of oil and muck all over the engine deck. I then moved on again to Ammo by MIG. This time they're rust references. I'll pop them up on screen and created streaks of rust and little areas of darkened rust around things like the spare track links and the rear of the tank. Time now for a new paint range and one that I was trialling for the first time by AK Interactive. I used several of their references to pick out chipping and areas of worn paint on the model. At this scale it's pretty hard to do. And I wouldn't go as crazy as I might do on a 135th scale tank but I just added little bits of chips and worn paint just to show damage at the rear of the tank. Next a new product again from AK Interactive, their weathering pencils, and I used one of their metallic references. These as you can see are simply pencils and you can use them by sharpening them to a fine point to create things like metallic sheen on tow cables and areas of wear on the model. They worked really quite well. I'll be experimenting more with this product. It's something I want to trial on different models, but it was a really interesting innovation. And it certainly worked on this particular little tank to give a metallic appearance to some components. And here is the finished tank. It was a bit of an inherited build, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Now, if you're wondering about the base, what I'll do is I'll show that after the credits for those who are interested. So I leave you with these final shots of the tank. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this series, and goodbye. Subscribe for our latest videos. I used an old diorama plinth that had displayed a T-34 and I cut out some channels, initially using a mini drill and then some chisels. Into those channels I could apply some epoxy sculpt, 
that allowed me to press the model in and show some of the heft and weight of it. The epoxy sculpt left some nice track imprints and detail in the mud channels. I could then paint them off camera in a mud colour and gather together some scenic selection grass tufts from Boontown Metals. I could also apply some loose pigments all over the mud as well as affixing the grass. The pigments were attached with MIG Productions Pigments Fixer. I could then spray the whole model using exactly the same mud tones that I'd used on the tank itself. That way the tank would marry up with its environment. I drilled through the base of the chassis and applied a simple screw and that would enable me to affix the model to the base. I could then drill the base and position the tank permanently once and for all. I got my cordless drill, made a hole, made sure that the screw fitted and then super glued it in place. That ensured that the lower part of the chassis was affixed to the base. I could then add some catalyzer and affix the turret. And that's how I finished the model. There you can see it sitting proudly on its base. There was a bit of a problem in that there were a few gaps due to shrinkage. So I used a pipette and applied pigments, the same pigments dry, just by blowing them onto the model using the pipette. And then using capillary action, I could drop some pigment fixer from MIG Productions and allow that to flow into all the pigments and attach them permanently. That did a good job of filling all the gaps and with that the model was finished. Thanks for watching this extra segment and I'll see you soon. Bye.